Lake and Tomlinson, one of the top guards on the market. Do you think the 49ers will resign him? I don't think so. I think he's going to end up somewhere else. I think the problem that they're going to run into with Tomlinson, I think he's going to get somewhere probably in the neighborhood of 10 to 12 million per year from another team on an offer. And and the 49ers shouldn't, shouldn't match that. I don't think he's a good player, but I don't think he's worth 10 to 12 million with what he brings. And so I would let him walk if, if he gets to that number. Yeah. I think the Niners will let, I don't think they value the, the guard position that highly. I mean, I think the reason they drafted Aaron Banks in round two last year is because they saw this coming and mm-hmm. they were trying to get out in front of it instead of being reactive and drafting a guard after they let like a Tomlinson go have one ready. The problem is Aaron Banks didn't exactly get developed or show anything that would make you feel confident in giving him the starting job. But I think it just shows that they probably were thinking along the lines that you're talking, thinking don't want to yeah. pay like Thompson. He's going to be expensive. We may not even have the money for him. Sure. And, and it makes sense to do that. And it's, you know, they, that's like back when they drafted McGlinchey, right? When they had, Mc, when they drafted McGlinchey, they had a right tackle. So it was like, Oh, maybe they're going to move him to guard. And then the next day, you know, they traded the other guy, but um, it's kind of a similar thing there. And, and I do think that uh, Banks, Banks is going to be okay. It's going to be interesting to see because he missed most of training camp with the, with the shoulder injury that he suffered against uh, Kansas city. So we never really got a chance. We only got about half the preseason to really see what he could do half a training camp. And then after that, he was on the, on the sidelines the rest of the way. So you know, did he did he improve on the sidelines while we weren't able to watch him? That's going to be the thing to, to pay attention to, and uh, when the team gets back to the field this year. Also, one more thing I want to say about Aaron Banks: How do we know he's not good? Like, well, he just didn't play. I mean, Ambry Thomas didn't play. There, there were, and everyone assumed, oh, he must be terrible. And then he got an opportunity, and actually, he's promising. I mean, I th- mm-hmm. maybe we just don't know a damn thing about Aaron Banks. <laughs> I'm just uh, that's, that, I, I think that I think that's I think that's a part of the issue here yeah. is because yeah. we don't really know a whole lot about him because he only lasted about four weeks before he was injured right. and he was gone and yeah. he was struggling in camp. But part of the reason he was struggling may have been because he was playing on the right side. He never played on the right side. Right. And Avery Thomas and, was struggling in camp. We don't know how his, his how his year would have progressed. Exactly. Right. You know, and like, and I always like to go back to Penesul because Penesul was the guy who everybody wanted as as a tackle, and he struggled right. throughout camp. He was people were talking about how bad he was playing at the right, right tackle after having played left tackle throughout the whole the whole season or his whole career at, at Oregon. Yeah. And then week one, what do you know? He's over at left tackle because of an injury. He plays really good, plays there for eight weeks, did really well, and then, you know, when he shifted back to right tackle, he played better at that point. And they asked him about it, and it was like, you know, all that experience that he went through in training camp and then I think helped him out. And then the fact that, you know, he got to play his natural position, got him the, the in-game experience, you kind of put those things together, and now you got a guy who's better to, better for it. So we'll see what happens with Aaron Banks, but I'm I'm on the positive side with him right now. So we both agree, Lake and Tomlinson most likely not coming back to the 49ers. Who do you think their starting left guard will be next season? Daniel Brunskill? I, I, maybe there's I, you just you mentioned it. I think it's going to be Aaron Banks. I think there's a really good chance well, that Aaron Banks just goes along the lines of what you said. Maybe they'll move Banks back to the right and, and put Brunskill on the left. Um, I would rather see. I would rather keep. I would rather move. I would rather have uh, have Banks be your left guard just because he's had a year. To get that, it down. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, even even though you know you want him, you had him practicing over at right guard. They did have him doing some some footwork stuff, you know, at the beginning of practices at left tech guard and back and forth. I'd rather have him be on the left side next to uh, Trent Williams, and Good and point. between Trent between Trent, Trent Williams and uh, Alex Mack, if Alex Mack comes back, then over next to uh, Mike McGinchy. I think that would be a better fit for him. Good point. Well, if they're going to go with Aaron Banks at left guard, they're going to have to bring in some competition as well. They could probably do that in free agency or or in the draft. Colton Kivitz, Jalen Moore, yeah, these guys, yeah. Yeah, Niner, not a buy. <laughs> says Jimmy Garoppolo's <laughs> stock go up since he beat the Super Bowl champs twice. Thoughts? Yeah, probably. I, I think I think his stock's higher than we think it is, especially if if Wilson and and Rodgers. But all right, I, I, I'm open minded. I'm open minded. 